Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this broadcast of the Weekly Beat. Uh, my name is Dumit Jere. I'm coming to you from Johannesburg in South Africa. As usual, my beautiful sister is with me, Maggie Omutesi from uh, Dakar in Senegal. Yeah, Correct? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just feel like you are never sure. I am in Dakar, Dumi. How are you? How is everything? No, everything is all right. Everything is all right. Um, things seem to sort of be stabilizing, if I should say that. I don't know if I... In terms yeah. of uh, business, in terms of uh, everyday life? I guess so. I guess so. Um, mm. It's 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 uh, almost like, you know, two years ago, mm. uh, this week, mm. I think the whole world was now in total lockdown. Like, yeah, that's it. We were not allowed to go out of the houses, go to places roads were empty people working from home mm. you only go out if you need medical attention or to go to the shops uh anything else you need a special permit um it yeah. was even worse in your bag mm. yeah tell me about it mm. and we were all going into this lockdown all united and we didn't know what was to come mm. and it's funny how time flies, uh, because two years later on, um, the world sort of seems to be in a very unsure position. On the one hand, um, African governments are dropping the requirements for masks and all of those things. Mm. At the same time, in China, uh, they are now in hard lockdown because keep rising. Hong Kong as well. Yeah, uh, so and this time of, around uh, for children situation. too. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's one of those where uh, uh, you, you you ask yourself, behind us, or are we just in the middle, or, or are we reaching it? Who knows? Uh, for my part, I am very exhausted. Uh, but hey, I still yeah. just have to hold on. And... Um, continue listening to the authorities i guess when was the last time you, you traveled? know okay I, I i don't want the world to come up to me that i uh I, i've been all over even with this but i i actually traveled um i've been traveling at least okay and and what have, um, or what but, have you observed um around the requirements um the countries that you've gone to do they still require pcr tests or if you're yes. vaccinated, you're okay, or? I think um, a week ago I was in Cabo Verde and um, I didn't have to, when I gave them my my, my vaccination card, they, they let me yeah. go. They didn't ask for a PCR test. But then uh, when I landed in Dakar, I had to present both. But what I've, for me, what I've realized is that it's no longer that interesting or exciting to travel. In fact, when I have to travel, I get even more anxious. Uh, about COVID tests, about, you know, you know, everything that I really have to go through. But uh, mentally, it's not um, as easy or as it was for me years ago, uh, because mm -hmm. also in my job, you could wake up today and find yourself somewhere, you know, covering yeah. a story or going for to cover to, to collect something. So now it's, um, it's quite different. I, I feel like we are confined. I'm one of those people that are so worried about, you know, working from offices ever again. I always feel like I don't think I ever <laughs> uh, will feel comfortable again or anything. So for me, uh, there's a, a, a lot that drastically changed. So for me, uh, I would say above everything, uh, yeah. um, placing a very high value on life. Mm. Uh, um, I mean, we have so many people that we lost over the past two years. Um, I remember speaking to my uh, little sister the other day and I was like, uh, you know, we really should be thankful that, you know, our family, our closest circle is still intact, like we didn't lose anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I remember almost shouting at my parents because my parents are older <laughs> now, so they didn't quite understand some of these things. So you almost have to like uh, infuse fear in them, like, hey, don't, 
do not go out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, I think above yeah. all, um, the value of life, uh, also listening uh, to authorities, even sometimes when it feels very inconvenient. Um, yeah. Sometimes you're like, hey, but some of these instructions don't make sense, like honestly. Mm. Uh, but in the long run, I mean, we can't argue with science. We are not scientists. We're just mm. entrepreneurs in Africa. I uh, know. So you know what I read? That there was a rise in our entrepreneurship globally uh, during this period of time. Mm, 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 what do you think really caused that? Well, the one factor is that um, a lot of people lost jobs. So that's, mm. that's the one very sad factor. And sometimes we go into entrepreneurship, uh, not because of choice, but because yeah. it's the last resort. That's the only thing that's there. Yeah. If uh, a whole lot of people are also losing their employment elsewhere, then that means the chances that I'll get a job somewhere else mm. are going to be very slim. So what is my next option? Because I still have mm. a family that I need to feed, I need to put food mm. on the table and all of that stuff. So um mm. you then tend to entrepreneurship uh in some form or another uh and so i would attribute it to that um yeah i think that, that's on what the flip side a lot of people also quit their jobs uh there was a realization of you know <laughs> whether i'm doing the right thing or not and uh i think for me that was the most interesting part of it but um, yeah. on, on the other side, do me, I think for the African continent and for some of us that were following each and everything, I, it showed us who Africa's friends are, uh, what are, where we are, you know, on the global stage. But also, I also feel like there was a, a lot going on in terms of what would happen to Africa during that time. Uh, there was a realization of, oh, so this is what you guys think of us, you know, even in terms of this and, and, and everything else. I hope and honestly, I really hope that there are lessons to pick, especially in terms of um, uh, sustainability, to be self-sufficient as a continent. Uh, because at a mm, time where mm. you are not able to buy stuff from China or get anything from Europe, uh, we, we were just here. You know, we didn't even have medication. You know, we didn't have vaccines. We didn't have anything. I I hope that for that's a lesson we can pick from, and uh, be able to develop our own factories, develop our own you know um, avenues to 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 feed our people. So mm -hmm. beyond everything, I saw um, this is for me one one of the biggest lessons I learned actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, and 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 it's it's it, it's very good that you mentioned that because. Uh, I mean, this show, after all, it's about investments across the continent. Mm. So uh, you highlighting that, uh, it also highlights the opportunities that exist um, for investors, for entrepreneurs, um, mm. for people that want to pivot or ex extend, I mean, expand into, uh, into other uh, industries and so forth. Um, uh, but I can't tell you how happy I am that... Um, Almost all the countries surrounding South Africa, uh, mm -hmm. so that's your Zimbabwe, your Botswana, your Eswatini, uh, Namibia, all those guys. You can now just go there with your vaccine card. Uh, oh, that's so I'm amazing. very happy about that. That's really amazing. I mean, there yep, is there is yep. a lot to celebrate, and and uh, you know when I talked about um, uh, you know looking within ourselves for. Uh, for solutions, it also brings us to what we want to talk about today, which is um, the Democratic Republic of Congo joining the East African community. Mm. And for me, it's monumental because Congo is one of the largest and most populous countries now that we have in the ESC. It, as somebody who mm. comes from within the region, I know the East African region is it's one heck of an organized uh, block that has seen uh, progress over the years. And, um, you know, it has a growing population, but also um, it's, it's welcomed different countries like South Sudan, uh, like DRC. And now we're looking at a GDP that has moved, rather a regional GDP that has moved from $193 billion to $240 billion oh, by wow. just having Congo, um, you know, within the block. Because Congo comes with a population of over 90 million people. You know, so and you know, with all that it, the resources that it has, 
you can imagine it's been neighboring five of the ESC countries, but not but not being into the block. So there's been all those um, uh, barriers uh, in the past, but now you know you lo you're looking at okay, what will actually happen? Now that we mm -hmm. have a big player, uh, a big uh, country that produces probably 60% of the world's cobalt, you know, what yes. could really happen for this region? What, what are we looking at? And it's been really exciting news. And I've been reading a lot of articles around it. And, you know, of course, we're always skeptical when it comes to Africa, unfortunately. We're always like, oh, will this mm -hmm. happen with the security? Oh, will this happen yeah, with the yeah, infrastructure? Yeah. Of course yeah. it's going to happen. I think we sometimes just have to be a little optimistic. And, and uh, you know, um, I honestly don't know how to think about it. I don't know wh where to place my excitement. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it going to yield some results? I'm, 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 I'm thinking and I'm like, this is really massive. This is, this is really big for the region. But is yeah. it really going to happen? Um, or are we just going to, you know, take a step ahead and then take five back. But uh, like I said, we have to be a, li a, a little bit optimistic. Uh, what do you think yeah. of this? Well, so the way I look at it is um, uh, if we're going to have, uh, almost call it a borderless Africa, um, yeah. it starts uh, it starts from the work that is done per block, per block, per block. Mm. So. If you look at um, Southern Africa, uh, almost, if I'm not mistaken, all of the countries, they can now visit one another without having to apply for a visa ahead of time. So you get your visa on arrival at the port of entry of that country. Um, in uh, East Africa, um, I think people, some some other countries, they actually can travel without a passport, only an ID. Yeah, only an ID, and uh, right. you don't need a visa, you just need a stamp. Exactly. So now, uh, with the joining of DRC, obviously, maybe some of those uh, formalities have not quite been ironed out, but we then expect all of those things to then happen. And that is the only way that uh, we can increase trade and take advantage of the AFCFTA um, by one, doing away with these borders that were formed in Berlin in 18, whatever year it was, <laughs> um, without our consent even. Um, I think we, I, and I agree with you. I mean, for uh, the FCFTA to happen, I think, um, and I, we did an episode about it, about this sometime last year, looking at, mm uh putting our little homes together before we go bigger and of course there are lots of theories that you know lots of uh, analysts who say oh let's first put the blocks together uh ecos has the same the same thing i mean you you use your id to travel across uh the east african region rather the west african region west african. yeah west africa as well and i oh, just got okay. to know about this the other day yeah east africa has the same thing and of course um uh, uh, South Africa, like you mentioned, but uh, we're looking at, for me, I think I look at it in a way that, you know, from the Indian to the Atlantic Ocean, you have Congo that borders these other countries um, in the center and the west. And, uh, you know, you have the East African community that has for long uh, been open to each other. I think East African community has really been progressive in terms of trade and customs. Of course, there are still hurdles, like many countries like Tanzania in the past, I think was one of the biggest challenges, um, but we're hoping that it gets better. Um, yeah. But I love to talk about trade and investments to me so much. But what is trade and investments if there is no movement of people, you know? How are you going to do this trade if you can't freely move to a country? Like, mm -hmm. even the whole idea that you need a visa on arrival, why do you need a visa on arrival? Mm -hmm. Why can't you travel mm -hmm. with your own, you know, ID? Why, why, why isn't it easier for you to just walk in as, you know, it's, we have passports that show East African community, it calls. Mm -hmm. Isn't that enough mm -hmm. to, to let me go without giving me, a, you know, asking for a visa? So um, I always say that um, we can't trade, we cannot do intra-Africa investments, intra-region investments, if we absolutely cannot let people travel freely. Because at the end of the day, 
it's it's not about you know business business it's about the people they make the business they make the trade i mean you're not going to put your money in tanzania before going there to see what's really going on at the end yeah. of the day you want to understand that okay is it favorable for me this is why it's always harder for africans to invest within africa because they can't travel freely but it's easier for actually a foreigner to come and invest within Africa because they don't, they don't need visas, actually. Rather, they don't need to apply for visas. They need to just get them on arrival. So a lot of that for me, I think, um, even as Congo joins, um, we, we should take baby steps and first open up to, to the people, first make free movement of people before we even start with the goods. If <sighs> they're going to take full advantage of all of these things, infrastructure needs yeah. to be taken care of, the roads, the yeah. rail. Uh, it's not yeah. as good as compared to the other countries. Uh, even once you are now within DRC, uh, the corridors mm. that uh, lead into the into the major towns, they have to be mm. reworked because uh, the roads are very poor. So for me, that would be the one thing. Uh, the second actually should be the first thing for me mm. is, um, let's face it, insecurity. Um, DRC has not been one of the stable countries uh in the world um some people even use go ahead and use a, a word chaotic country i don't want to use such a word uh <laughs> but the insecurity the wars that go on especially in eastern uh, drc the areas of goma yeah. and all of that mm. this war that has been going on for years and it's almost like we are we are we, we, we are tired of it we do like we don't talk about it anymore it's like ah Ah, those people are just fine. Ah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, but if uh, if if trade is going to boom, uh, mm. those things need to be taken into consideration. Because mm. if I'm going to move my goods, um, then I need to be assured that um, they are safe. So th th there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. While we rejoice, yes, we also are aware of the challenges that exist. Mm. and the work that must be put in by uh, the respective presidents um well yeah of, of of one of drc i think he's also the chairman of was he not the chairman of african union currently he was i think um, he stepped down this year he he was oh, it changed year. it went to senegal or somewhere there yeah it went to senegal yeah yeah so um it's 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 coming at a good time a time when uh, him being new in power, um, President uh, Felix Chisaked, uh, him having been in power and also, I mean, having been, having been new in power as well as uh, taking over the chairmanship of uh, uh, African Union the, uh, the, 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 the past year, uh, he has seen, he has interacted mm -hmm. with lots of other countries and he has seen how uh, it benefits his country to be mm -hmm. united and uh, join in other people. The mm -hmm. one thing, though, that I don't quite get is how as a country you say uh, where do you place yourself because drc is also part of southern africa so is it just a country that's positioning itself well that okay yes, well, maybe it's a country africa, that... but i'm also part of east africa yeah but, but you know drc actually borders five east african countries it borders rwanda you know burundi no tanzania uganda the only country that doesn't border i think is uh kenya, kenya. so yeah. yeah so it's 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 practically it stuff like that. but also look at it this way i mean they have the resources we want to be a part of you know maybe they don't want to position this first, but people want them to position <laughs> <laughs> because we're moving into well, we're hoping they for do better. renewable energies you know they have what what what's going to be the hot test cake in the next couple of years uh yeah, true, so yeah true it, well, it then has... i guess maybe the fault is uh, southern africa's fault because they didn't quite take advantage of the relationship <laughs> that they had with drc to make use of those resources and <laughs> have lithium <laughs> batteries and all of those things. So. Yeah, but I think, uh, for me, I think seeing DRC join ESC, and it's not just because I, I come from the East African community, but, you know, there is, uh, I, I always feel like there is a sense of um, uh, togetherness within the ESC in terms of uh, mm. progress. Um, yeah. There are a lot of things they have achieved, um, and it's never easy. Of course, we talk about closed borders and all of that, but there's so much they've done in the past when you look at, you know, customs, when you look at uh, movement of, 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 of persons within the, the region. And having DRC in, I hope that 
with how ESC has been progressing, there is actually um, some progress made with the Congo when it comes to even secretarial infrastructure. And uh, we've passed the times of having, you know, uh, uh, insecure, like unstable countries. You have neighbors, you can't have a neighbor that is always unstable. You're just never gonna grow. At some point, mm -hmm. we really need to get over it and, and, and find ways to move forward. But again, Dumi, we can talk for days or hours and have these conversations yeah, yeah. around Africa. But I think it's a good thing for uh, the business community within East Africa, uh, Kenya, you know, Tanzania. There's so much that can be done in the Congo. But it's also good for Congo. Mm -hmm. It's good for Congo. They produce maybe this gives them a market, 170 yeah. million people, something yeah. within the ESC. That is a market you can, you know, you, you, you can produce for. Even for East African countries, 90 million people in just one country this is a market that you need for your banks kenya the banking sector you know for your mm -hmm. goods that you're producing for your coffee for all of that this is also mm -hmm. good for for the for the business community but again um we're talking about afcfta maybe it's time to set up really proper hubs and manufacturing plants yeah. across africa and it could be a starter who knows yeah 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 okay um yeah. It, as we close, you are an uh, East African, uh, well, native. Uh, educate me. How uh, do almost all the countries in East Africa speak Kiswahili? Um, no, it's uh, but most of them do. Uh, or Tanzania, Kenya, uh, um, Congo speak Kiswahili. Congo, um, Congo, Congo, eh? as in DRC. The DRC Congo about. speaks Swahili. So actually, it's, okay. it's getting back home. And right. uh, uh, mostly half of the country speaks Swahili. But even those that don't speak Swahili have made Swahili an official language. So they are adapting and moving towards mm. making it official. But also, okay. um, I think you will go to Rwanda, Uganda, or Burundi you will speak Swahili like you speak English. You will find people that speak it. So it's a language we all know. It's a language we're used uh, to. It's a language we're familiar with. So I could say yeah. maybe 70% of the region really speaks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. And that's very good for trade. I think, and even those that don't speak Kiswahili. You know and, what's uh, funny? They speak French. Yes. You go to um, Rwanda, you can still speak French. You know what's funny now that you've mentioned it? And we're yeah. talking about trade. I think for the informal sector within the ESC, Huh. I think 90% speak Swahili. Oh, right. Yes, for the informal traders. Now that you've actually mentioned it, because this is this is the language of, uh, of business. money, money, business. Yeah, this is the mm -hmm. language of money, business. Yeah, so it could be like uh, three, three, you know, uh, a third of the entire region, you know, speaks. Oh, wow. Swahili. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't say unity, well, I don't know what does. <laughs> um, look, look um, I think in closing, we, we know that uh, the DRC obviously is going to enjoy lower tariffs, um, removal of certain administrative barriers. Uh, and some, and this is something that hasn't happened for decades and decades and decades, mm. despite them uh, having used the ports in Mombasa or Dar es Salaam to import some of their goods, depending on the region which they are uh, within DRC. So um, any progress that happens in Africa, some people may call me or may look at me uh, funny for being positive and optimistic about some of these things, but hey, if I'm not positive, then I don't know what I, I don't know what other feeling to have. <laughs> It'll be difficult for me to do business. So yeah. um, we are we're going to keep this. Uh, I mean, we're going to take. I mean, keep our eyes on this development closely, mm. and uh, we continue hoping for the future. I mean, for the best in the future. And as a new developments happen, I'm sure we'll revisit this topic in future episodes and build up on this conversation. But for now, we're going to have to leave it here, folks. Thank you so much uh, for tuning into this broadcast, wherever you are. Um, as, we, as, as we started the, 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 the broadcast talking about uh, the coronavirus, well, it's still there, folks. It's still real and it's still within us. Um, if, uh, if you can, please do get vaccinated. That's the only way we can actually um, open up our borders much, much sooner. Um, do not develop a casual attitudes. 
And on that note, special thank you to my co-host Maggie. Truly, truly appreciate this discussion. And uh, you educated me on a couple of number, I mean, a number of things around uh, the East African community. And hey, that's what the show is about, right? Knowledge exchange. So thank you for that. Uh, folks, remember to visit our website, Mansamedia. Uh, dot Africa for more um, for more information out about um, uh, the continent or any other stories that you may have missed, uh, as well as visit our social media pages, Mansa Media Africa on Facebook and Mansa underscore media on Twitter. All these details are displayed at the bottom. Uh, please also subscribe to our uh, weekly, weekly, weekly uh, newsletter called The Third Opinion. It comes out every Friday. We give you uh, snippets of what's going on across the continent. Please, please, please subscribe. And we promise to never disappoint. Till the next episode, I am Dumi Jere, and here's to peace and profits. And profits.